1, 2, 3. Bonjour, this is Pierre from Savoir Faire and here we are again. How are you liking this plein air live? This is fantastic. Here you are, some real plein air painting. And, um, and now I'm, I want to introduce you to a very good friend of mine I've known for a long, long time. Uh, we've even met in Paris at the Sennelier store. And is to me, before the big plein air uh, trend, Kevin McPherson, in my book, was the first painter, cap, you know, a while ago, that was promoting plein air painting, before the trend. And uh, you're going to be very happy to see his little trick. So here we go, Monsieur Kevin. Woo! Thank you, Pierre, for inviting me to share a few words about how I work and why I do certain things that I know will help the other artists out there. Years ago, when I was starting out as a young artist, I traveled many of the places around the world and I brought my pochade box with me. I paint it very small. And painting small, I feel, is one of the most beneficial things you can do because it makes you think big. It actually makes us simplify the subject. And I found that over the years, painting thousands, literally thousands of small six by eight inch paintings, it helped me think how to paint a large painting. I can use any one of these small paintings and make a very large canvas out of it. It was amusing the other day when Pierre gave me a call and said, hey, I would love you to give a few words to our audience. And I said, hey, I happen to be working on a painting right now using Sennelier paints. And I chose the Sennelier paints for this particular painting because it had a lot of rich darks in it. And I like the oil content of the Sennelier paints. Let me show you the painting I just finished. I'm actually doing a show of a bunch of these small paintings in these pochade boxes that I actually leave the palette mixtures. So this one of a kind painting has the unique mixtures for this particular painting. What's nice about this, it lets the viewer actually relive my process. He can actually see with this limited palette, all the colors I mix to create this painting. What I particularly like about Sennelier's oil content, without adding any other mediums, I'm able to get some real richness into the darks and keep the color clean and let it flow off the brush nicely. So every manufacturer has a different quality of oil content or pigment content, and they all have great uses for different types of things. So this, though, I really enjoyed working on it on the small scale, especially. So again, it's amazing how much information we can get in a small painting. And so I find a small painting, something that the viewer is engaged in, it makes them come up close and take a more intimate relationship with our final product. So out of these just four colors, titanium white, cadmium yellow light, alizarin crimson, and ultramarine blue, I created just an array of colors that become, in my mind, much more harmonious because all of them are mixed together. And when colors are mixed together, then they become more similar. And similarity is harmony. So we want variety, obviously. But when we're making an orange out of the yellow and the red, a purple out of the red and the blue, that purple or that orange has more in common to these three primaries than if we had separate tube colors. So that's one of the things I also profess using a limited palette. And it's just so much more challenging to make my mixtures to create my scene, whatever that may be. This is a typical Charleston street scene with the horse and carriage and the, the beautiful palms. And so here I'm using a few more colors but look at the beautiful array of color that we can get. I could often look at my students' palette 
and I can tell if they're doing a good job on their painting without even looking at the subject. I can see the relationships right on the palette that make for a beautiful painting. These beautiful mixtures help me create the air and atmosphere of this street scene in Quetzaltenango, Guatemala. When I work with three colors, yellow, red, and blue, here I'm using a cadmium red instead of an alizarin. I add thalo green. Thalo green is a crazy color sometimes. It can really get into everything and overtake. But because it's such a strong color, just the very hint of it will make some luscious, beautiful colors as in this painting of the little Crosby Dock. This painting, I used the limited palette of yellow ochre, red, cadmium red, and black, and titanium white. What I did before I started, I actually took these three colors and I mixed up my best orange, perhaps, out of the yellow ochre and the red. I created rich browns. I created purples and maybe my best blue out of just black and white. And as we look and live within this palette, this rainbow of color created there, we can start to sense the variety of color within this limited range. And out of these colors, I created my horse drawn, that's the title of this little painting, using these limited colors. So there's so many varieties that we can get once we live within the range of these limitations. And as I said, it's not really limiting, but quite liberating and very challenging and makes the process of painting that much more exciting to me. This particular palette was indeed a challenge. You can see here I have no yellow on my palette at all. And yet, when we look at all the colors together, they live beautifully together, the relationships. And I really love the final painting. And indeed, it was a challenge to make some of the relationships but I think it makes for a very unique color combination. And again, it's gonna make the journey as you learn. When you give yourself more challenges such as this, you will be engaged mentally as you are working. And you're not so worried about making a painting, but solving the problems. And that's what painting is all about, solving visual problems. So have fun, enjoy the process and keep on challenging yourself. Each one of them, I sometimes chose a different limited palette. I highly recommend working with a limited palette. My whole career, basically, I work with three colors, maybe six at the very most. And I mix them up. And you can see on these little boxes, I use a different limited palette as a challenge to myself for the various paintings. And each one of those, I don't find them limiting at all. I find them quite liberating and challenging and make me think and make me be more creative. And I just really love the interaction as I mix the colors. For instance, if I'm painting something with yellow ochre, red, and black, having no blue on the palette, it really is a challenge. It really makes me think. So I definitely recommend that you try to do that. What it does when you work with less color it makes you understand color relationships much more because we have to find the most beautiful blue with black and white, perhaps. So we have to regulate all the colors, all the relationships of the colors within that painting so that the blue that I don't have actually looks blue. So I, I recommend that you try that too. So I'm gonna give you a quick little preview of some of the paintings that will be in my upcoming show. And I'd love for you to come down there if you're in the neighborhood. So, Pierre, thanks again for inviting me to be a part of your little presentation here. And I love sharing all the different things, all the different methods and the tips and the, the things that make the journey of being an artist that much more special. So all of you, enjoy the journey and enjoy searching and don't worry about your failures you know each one of those will lead to perhaps your unique way of painting thanks again 
all my best, you guys.